Thank you. Ah, the Advent wreath is out again. I, I, I love Christmas. I really do. COVID or no COVID, it's still Christmas. And I know that Christmas time brings different emotions to different people. I mean, we can't be with family the way we normally would, and we're thinking a lot about that, but there's still things to be excited about at Christmas time, especially for kids, for young people, like just that, the simplest joy of receiving a gift, right? That's a big part of Christmas, just the joy of receiving a gift. Or I love the mystery of Christmas. I mean, I don't understand how some of those things happen the way the Bible narrates them. The virgin birth. Like, it's just this incredible mystery that God would become human and come into the world in that way in the person of Jesus. I just think, I just embrace that mystery at Christmas time. Or the mystery of how Santa Claus can get around to all those houses in one night. That's an incredible mystery. I embrace that at Christmas time. It's true that it can be a really tough time for people. Aside from COVID, it's just the hardest time of the year for some people who have just lost a loved one. And it's hard for them because everybody's supposed to be jolly at Christmas and they're just missing their loved one. And so we acknowledge those people at Christmas as we begin to think about Christmas and to think about what our hope is at Christmas time. We hear this message that the first part of Christmas is all about hope. We heard it from Isaiah. We hear it all through the gospel stories of Jesus. It's about how Christians believe that somehow in the birth of Jesus we have hope. COVID has emphasized our need for hope, hasn't it? Man, we should, I mean, we hope that the vaccine's going to work. We hope people who have been struggling with mental health can get healthy again. We hope that we can start meeting together again in the ways we always have. We have all this hope that COVID has brought on. We hope the economy can recover. Now, if we didn't have that hope through COVID, we would wither up and we would die if we didn't have that hope. Hope is so important. It doesn't matter what spiritual background a person comes from, what tradition, what ethnicity. It doesn't matter. We all recognize that hope is just so important because if you don't have any hope in your life, you just will wither up. You'll die without hope. And that's a fact. When you have something to hope for in the future, it colors your present with joy and with peace of mind. Here's a story about hope for you. In 1984, it's a long time ago, I lived in Toronto, I lived on the corner of Bathurst and Bloor, right next to Honest Ed's, the flashing lights of Honest Ed's. Can you believe, really, that Honest Ed's isn't there anymore? So I was living on that corner, and I was a musician at the time, living in Toronto, I was playing clubs here and there, I was a singer and guitar player. I made a cassette tape. Ah, oh, cassettes. <laughs> Remember, I made this cassette tape of 20 songs that I had written. And I went down to True North Records, which was on Richmond Street West, with this cassette in my hand. And I went in there to give them my original material so they could have a listen. And I went in, and there was a small office, this guy sitting at a desk, piles of paper everywhere, spilling over his desk. I gave him the cassette, and I said, hey, I wrote 20 songs. I just wanted to drop this off. He said, pop it in. I said, what? He said, just pop it in. There was a cassette player on his desk. <laughs> you want me to pop it in now? Yeah, just pop it in. So I popped in my cassette, closed it, pushed play, and together we listened to a song I had written called You Are All I Need. My upper lip was starting to sweat. After he said, that's not bad, I'll make sure John gets it. John was the big guy. John was the guy that sat in the office upstairs at True North Records. True North Records, this is Bruce Coburn, Murray McLaughlin, Barney Bentall, and the big guy's going to listen to my tape. I floated out of that office back onto Richmond Street West because the big guy was going to listen to my tape. I will never forget how that feeling of hope transformed me. It was a March day. It was miserable. It was cold and raining and windy, but I was walking in the sunshine I was walking in the warmth because I had the hope that this guy was going to listen to my tape. 
I did gigs for a couple of months in the dark and smoky bars to which I had grown accustomed. And then I got a letter. I got a letter from True North Records. I opened the letter. It said, we really appreciated you uh, coming in and we thought the songs were good, but it's not really what we're looking for at this time, not really the genre. Please submit what you have for us next time. We'd love to hear from you again. You know, in the grand scheme of things, all things work together for good, but I will never, I'll never forget. When my good friend Hope is with me, life is good. When you live in hope, whatever hope you have in your life, if your good friend Hope is walking with you, life is good. What hope do you live in today? Maybe you've graduated from high school and you're just still having to wait a year before you go to university, but you're looking forward to university because you know you have potential. You know the world can be your oyster because as soon as you get there, you're going to learn stuff and you have your whole life ahead of you and you're just filled with that hope. What do you hope for today? Maybe you just got married and you're just thinking about family, you're thinking about children. Maybe you got a good report. From, a, from, from your doctor, and now you're just filled with hope, and it doesn't matter if it's raining outside, it doesn't matter if it's drizzling and windy, now you're walking in warmth and sunshine because your good friend Hope is with you. You all know that's true. When you have hope, you have warmth, you have light. We're, we're, we've placed a lot of hope in our first Christmas story this year, and it's going to be totally different. We can't have 2,500 people come in we're just going to have a few people come in for one live stream, but we, we have so much hope that that Christmas story is going to touch people, and it's going to be a good thing for people, and it's going to be helpful to people, and it's going to bring Christmas into the lives of so many people. We have that hope. And because we have that hope, we walk in warmth today because we're looking forward to that. What hope do you live in today? There is a specific hope that we read about in the Bible. Because the reality is, even though you might know that hope will color your life, even though you might know, even just logically, that if you have hope, you'll have warmth and sunshine, what happens when you can't find that hope? What happens when you're just overcome by worry, or overcome by loneliness, or overcome by, by disease, and you just can't find the hope? Isaiah wrote, even young people grow tired and weary. Even young men stumble and fall. And maybe that's, maybe that's you today. Maybe you're that, just that, that weariness that is so deep and thick into your bones. How do you find hope in that weariness? Maybe it's you that's just been stumbling for months and months and months. And Isaiah says, those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. And they'll soar up on wings like eagles. That's the promise right there. Those who hope in God will renew their strength. That's a promise. Those who hope in God will. It's like, like the word is not, the ancient Greek word is not translated into might. You know, if, if, if certain circumstances, maybe if you're fortunate, maybe if God loves you more than God, it's not might. It's not might. It's will. If your hope is in God, God will restore your strength. So what's the hope of God? Do you know when we gather at communion and we break bread and we lift up the cup, we remember all the things that we hope for. We remember the opening sentence of the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And God saw that it was good. From the very first verse of the ancient word, there is this teaching that not only is God real, not only is there a power in the universe that is among us and that is real, but that power is good. And that power creates good things. And we were created out of that power that creates good things. That gives us hope from the very first verse of the Bible. And as we go further in the Hebrew scriptures, we begin to see that not only is God real and the source of goodness, but that God wants to be in relationship with you. God was with Adam and Eve walking around in the garden until they messed up and made a wrong decision. God was with them. 
God was with Moses and, and Israel as they, as, as they went through the desert on the way to the promised land. God led them by a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day. Psalm 23 says God comes up alongside us and walks with us through the valley of the shadow of death. People, if we can find a way to not just believe that, but experience it, that God wants to be in relationship. It's the same God that created everything. It's the same God that made the stars. That same God wants to be in relationship with you, wants to walk with you, wants to know you intimately. That's a promise. It gives us hope. And then, at Christmas time, we get this teaching of Emmanuel. That God now comes into our lives in the form of a person, in the form, God becomes one of us. That's how much God wants to know who you are. God now becomes us in the form of a person that we now call Emmanuel. And we remember that Emmanuel was born in a barn. He's one of us. There was no palace in the Christmas story. And at the end, that's the beginning, at the end, Jesus was crucified on a cross and suffered a horrible, painful death so that we can know that when we're suffering, God knows. Never think that God doesn't know you're suffering. That's what this candle of hope is. We have the hope that God knows you're suffering. I'm just going to leave you with a story, another story. Because there's a hope that we have, but then there's also a hope that we can give away. Jesus said, as you're loved, I want you to go and love each other now. As I have given you peace, I want you now to be an instrument of peace. As I have healed you of your wounds, I want you to go now and be a healing presence in the world. We give hope as much as we take it. And so here's a story. Another story that came out of the 1980s, I'm getting old. This was the early 80s, 1982. A friend and I whose name was Fred traveled from Edmonton, Alberta down to Hope, BC, down at the southern part of the province of British Columbia. Uh, It was a beautiful drive, I'll never forget it. We drove from Edmonton to Hinton, where the mountains start, then over to Jasper, and then got on Highway 5 South and drove down through Valemont, down through Kamloops, and then finally into Hope, BC. And as we were, we were, we were university students at the time, and we were going to have, we had a construction job with the railway, so that's why we were going to Hope. As we drove into Hope that day, it started to snow. But the weather report said, don't worry about it, it's mid-April, it's not going to turn into anything. So we found our little hotel that CNR, the CNR had booked for us, and we got in there. The next morning, we couldn't get out of the, we couldn't open up our front door for all the snow that was piled. Howling wind, blowing snow temperature falling, got a call from the foreman, said, not a surprise, but your work is canceled for the day, probably the week, stuck in a little motel room. But he said, even though everything shut down, he he thought that there was one cafe that might be open. So we headed out, and my friend Fred just had a little spring jacket, because he was from Windsor. And we found this cafe, and we entered... (laughs) And it was packed. This little cafe was packed. It was like every stranded soul in the universe had ended up there. And we walked in and somebody sort of slid down the bench so that we could sit. Howling wind blowing outside. Waiter comes up, big burly guy, half the kitchen on his apron. He says, what you want? Fred says, do you have a menu? He says, we don't have any menus. We didn't get any deliveries today. All we have is soup. So Fred says, I like a little breakfast soup from time to time. And we had soup and it came in a big round mug. And it was the strangest color. It was gray. It was the color of a mouse, this soup. (laughs) So much so that my friend Fred thought out loud that maybe it was cream of mouse soup. We didn't eat it. We just wrapped our hands around it to keep our fingers warm. And then the door flew open again. Wind, snow flying in the door. Somebody shouts, shut the blankety-blank door. And in comes a woman. Just the thinnest coat, no hat, ice crystals in her 
eyebrows and in her hair. Thin, thin woman. Maybe 40 years old, but maybe, maybe a, lot young, um, a lot younger. But she came in, and she took a seat. Waiter comes over. What do you want? She said, I'll just have a glass of water. He said, you can't sit here with this packed room and just order water. If you're just going to order water, you're going to have to leave. Well, it became apparent that she wasn't going to buy anything or that she couldn't buy anything. And so she stood up, started to button up her jacket again, and a strange thing happened. One by one, the people at that table she was sitting at stood up. And then the people at this table, and then the people at this table, just one by one, they all stood up. Even Fred stood up. And they all started to leave. Okay, okay, the big burly guy with the kitchen on his apron said. She can stay. She can stay. And he brought her some soup. Well, everything was resolved after that, and the place grew quiet, and all we could hear was the tinking of spoons on the side of the mugs as people ate their soup. We actually ate our soup eventually. It wasn't half bad. But I had had it before. Somehow I knew I had had that soup before, but I couldn't place when I had had it before. But I, could, I couldn't remember, but I knew I had had it. That cream of mouse soup. And then it hit me. It hit me. That cream of mouse soup tasted for all the world like bread and wine. It tasted for all the world like bread and wine. This is our hope. When we sit together at table, all are welcome. And we do this in remembrance of Jesus. Our communion hymn is a song called Emmanuel. The bands are going to come up and we'll play this together.
Jesus said, come unto me, all you who are weary, all you who are heavy laden, burdened, and I will give you rest. Take who I am into your life. Find a way to take who I am into your life, and you will find rest from all your labors, as Jesus said. As we sit at table and break bread, and eat together and drink this cup, we remember who Jesus is. We remember that Jesus promised the Holy Spirit would always be with us. That when we walk into a difficult situation and we think to ourselves, I don't know how I'm going to handle this, that the Holy Spirit will help us and will replace our weakness with all that strength. When we break bread and drink this cup, we remember Jeremiah said that God has his hands on you like a potter has his hands on clay and that, that God will create you into something brand new. And oftentimes we think to ourselves, I've made too many mistakes. I'm not good enough. I've cheated people. I've been dishonest. But then we remember at communion, Matthew who was a tax collector, and Jesus said, follow me, and he became an apostle. Oftentimes, we think, I'm too ordinary. I don't have any talents. I'm not special. And then at communion, we remember that Mary, the mother of Jesus, was a girl, uneducated, a peasant from a nowhere town called Nazareth, and God took her and birthed from her Emmanuel, and then Mary saying, my soul, my soul magnifies the Lord. Sometimes we think I'm too old. And then at communion, we remember Abraham and Sarah. Sarah had a baby in her 90s because God promised her she would. Sometimes we think I'm not faithful enough. I'm not faithful enough. And then at communion, we remember Peter. Peter betrayed Jesus on that night. And then Peter became the rock of the church. God will create in you something brand new. As we break bread and drink this cup, we remember eternal life. We remember the promise that the end of this life is just the beginning into a life that will last forever. No more pain, no more tears. A communion, if we can take that into our hearts, it gives us great hope for today. And so on that night that Jesus was betrayed, he took loaf and he broke it in front of his disciples. And he said to them, may this bread be for you my body now. Whenever you gather together to eat, not just tonight, but for all generations to come. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, on that night, Jesus took the cup. And after they had finished eating, Jesus held it up for all of them to see and said, this cup will be a new covenant sealed in the love that I have shown you and in the blood that I will shed for you. Whenever you gather together to drink of this cup, for all generations to come, you do so in remembrance of me. Join our hearts in prayer.
God, we thank you for this communion. We thank you that you come into our lives that you want to be with us and walk with us and help us. We thank you for that hope and for the call that now asks us to go out into the world and be instruments of hope for people around us. God, on this day, when many people struggle, we lift people up to you from our hearts, silently, people we're worried about, In particular, as a church, we think of Jerry Blundell, who passed away in his family. We think of Roz Campbell's mother, Naomi, who died this week, very unexpectedly. God, surround us as we leave this place with your hope. Remind us that however we take communion, either here or either at home, either juice or bread, whatever way we take it, God, you bless it, and we are all together in it. We are unified in that sacrament that we might then go out and be an instrument of hope into the lives of people who really need it. God, you go with us in that call. You replace our weakness with your strength now and forevermore. Amen.